Baby minorities, sexual and gender minorities, have something to teach the church about dying to self, about new life, about... What's happened, actually, Brandon, is, you, is you've become an apostate. First, I mean, I obviously reject that I uh, have fallen into apostasy or deconverted. You, um, you deny I, scripture as the ultimate foundation of life. You are an apostate. Throughout, you are an apostate. You teach. History. Brandon, I'll say I this with respect to you death, because you're in the image of God. I want to respect the image of God in you and respect you and be friendly to you. But you teach others to entertain their lusts, satisfy, satisfy their lusts, things that God explicitly condemns in his word. And so I love you in, in Jesus' name. But you you are an apostate, you are a deceiver, and, and you reject the word of God. For the true Christian to avoid the scandal of the gospel, well, it would be easier for them to go around the Red Sea or to climb the walls of Jericho. We cannot avoid the scandal. We must embrace it and we must not compromise. We must not compromise. Not one doctrine dealing with the blood of Christ must be compromised. Make sure to put Jesus Christ first okay god first when you wake up in the morning make sure to pray first okay before you check on your phone before you check on your instagram before you check on whatever whatever thing pray first prayers work it just does this pastor we made a video about this pastor before pastor quote unquote guys just comment below whatever you think about this video and so now you don't have any fear of going to hell i don't believe in hell anymore should i let this play first okay let Oh, you don't believe in hell? No. Do you believe in heaven? Uh, ish. Pause. Okay, pause right there. Let's talk about this real quick. Let's talk about this. I'm very excited, okay? I don't know. I'm very excited to expose this madness right here, okay? This is just foolery. Okay, now this man right here, okay? I'm going to show you guys. There's still some people that do not believe in hell or heaven. But before you even get there, there's so many things I want to talk about, man. Okay. People like this, first of all, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, they have unclean spirit in them, okay? They have unclean spirits in them. The devil is working, man. The devil is working very hard because people like this, if you're a pastor, okay? You're a pastor. I don't know how you are gay and then you're a pastor at the same time, but let's just pretend, okay? Let's just pretend he's gay. He's a pastor. First of all, the whole thing of being a pastor is to help people get to Christ, okay? It's to help people get to heaven. It's to save souls. I mean, spread the gospel. What is the goal? What is what is the end game of spreading the gospel so people can be saved? Am I lying or am I lying? Somebody comment below, man. The end game of the gospel is so everybody else can find themselves with God in heaven. I go to prepare a place for you. So wherever he is, we will be there too. You get what I'm saying? So this man is saying he does not believe in heaven or hell first. Let me, I'm going to just, anybody that's out there that's thinking that he, like hell is not a place, okay? Let's, do not be deceived. I'm going to give you guys a few Bible verses in which Jesus described hell, okay? few Bible verses in which Jesus describes hell. Now let's get it. You guys ready? Comment below what do you think about this video. These videos like this, man, are you? Man, I check this out. What is it? Luke 16, 23. Okay. Luke 16, 23. Luke 16, 23, King James Version. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Okay. And in hell, and in hell he lift up his eyes. Okay. From hell. By the way, I'm making a story about uh, the rich man and Lazarus. That's what it said, right? I'm making a, I'm making a story about that. It's going to be nice. So, in hell, okay? So, anybody that's out there that's saying hell is not a place, that is Jesus talking. You get what I'm saying? Next, okay? Next Bible verse. This right here is what? Mark 9, 43. Okay? Mark 9, 43. It reads. Mark 9, 43, New International Version. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life main than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. Go into hell where the fire never goes out. Okay? Where the fire never goes out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very, very serious. Uh, this is a... Hell is a place. Okay? Hell is a place. And things that you think may not send you to hell will send you to hell. 
okay? Like curse words, for example. People think just because you're cursing, yeah, okay, you're using cursing words all day, it will, it means nothing. Yes, it means something, man. It means something. Let's continue, man. What do you guys think about this? Comment below. Comment. Let's continue. Okay, this is Matthew 1342. Matthew 1342, New International Version. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay. Into the furnace, okay? Blazing, blazing furnace, where there will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. Anybody paying attention? Comment below what you think about this. I have more, man. I have, I got way more. You know, you know what I mean? This, I got more. This one right here is Matthew 25, 30. Matthew 25, 30, King James Version. And cast you the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, outer darkness, okay? Outer darkness. So the pastor, okay, the preacher, the whoever that guy is, that is saying he does not believe in heaven or hell. He's not a pastor. He's not a preacher. He's nobody. He just is, okay, we... We got to pray for these people, okay? We got to pray for this LGBT thinking that they are thinking that they are pastors. How do you become a pastor where you are, the, you are doing the exact opposite of what God wants you to do? What type of God are you praying to? Which God are you... Let's continue, people. Comment below. Those who are in an open or polyamorous relationship here this morning who might be squirming a little bit because this is an uncomfortable question here in church sometimes. I want you to hear me loud and clear as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know which Bible this man is reading. I don't know which Bible that is. I don't know which Jesus Christ he's talking about. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of the God Almighty on his robe and on his thigh. He has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's my Jesus. That's the God whom I serve, not the sissified Christ that's preached in pulpits around the United States of America. I serve the great God of the universe who gets angry and pours out his wrath. I serve the great God of the universe who demonstrated his wrath when he poured it out on his own son. And it amazes me that we believe this, that God would crush and kill his own son, but let you slide. Here's the Bible, okay? You, you are a priest, you are a pastor. You're talking about Jesus Christ. Which Jesus Christ are you talking about? The Jesus Christ that's in heaven that you don't believe in? The Jesus Christ that is talking about hell that you don't believe in? Who are you preaching to? Who's sitting and listening to this man? Okay? Do not be deceived, man. This is crazy. People, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. People are sitting there listening to this garbage. He's leading people astray, man. Straight astray. That's exactly what this, this is. People, you need to get the Bible, man. Whoever's out there, you, first of all, Get the Bible, man. Get. I, I don't know how many times I'm going to say this to people. I don't know how many times I'm going to say this to people, man. Get the Bible and read, man. Get the Bible and read. And just because somebody called themselves pastor, preacher, whatever, does not mean you're just going to have to swallow the things that are coming straight out of their mouth, man. Know the word for yourself. Do not take the word from me and just believe in that everything I'm saying is true. I may be lying to you. How would you know? If you don't know the truth. If you don't know the word for yourself. You get what I'm saying? Learn the word for yourself. Therefore, I can make mistakes myself. Okay? Because I don't know everything. I know a few things. I'm still learning. I'm always going to be learning. You get what I'm saying? I can make mistakes now and then, you know, here and there. And you out there, just because you know the word, you could be like, yo, that is not right. You said this. You should have said it. You should, you should have said it that way. You know, and I would read the comment. I'm like, yeah, I will learn from you too. You get what I'm saying? I know some, I know a few things. You know a few things. We help each other. We help each other. You get what I'm saying? That's how we move forward. Not just one person can know things and you don't know nothing. And you're like, oh yeah, I don't want to know nothing. I'm just going to take it from this guy and believe in everything that he's saying. You get what I mean? Know the word for yourself. 
So you can correct me, I can correct you. You can help me, I help you. We together, we move forward. You get what I mean? What do you guys think about this? Continue, let's, let's go. Your relationships are holy. They're beautiful and they are welcomed and celebrated in this space. And we call all of us together to the same set of standards that we call everyone to. To seek to follow Jesus in all of our relationships. To seek to be honest and respectful and self-sacrificial and consensual and loving with your partners. It, this man is not preaching about sins. What is it preaching about? Relationships with people? Yeah, I get it, I get it. <laughs> when any of us live into these standards, we can be sure that we're on the path to and holding it. Check out this clip. Check out this clip right here. Baby minorities, sexual and gender minorities, have something to teach the church about dying to self, about new life, about... That is not a sign of God's judgment, okay? Now, that's him, okay? That's him. That's the pastor. That's... That's the preacher. That's the pastor. What do you guys think about this, man? What do you guys think this is? What do you guys think this is? Comment below. I want to hear what you guys saying. Comment below. And make sure to like this video, guys. Share as much as possible. People need to see these things. People that are still believing that there's no heaven, there's no hell. I'm going to tell you this. It's the devil, man. It's the devil. The, de the, the greatest trick, okay? The greatest trick the devil ever pulled is to make people believe he does not exist. That is the greatest trick he ever pulled. Even atheists, okay? People that worship Satan believe that there's no Satan. So what are you worshiping? They literally take the Bible, they rip pages off the Bible. They're saying, they, you know, they're, 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 they're screaming Satan, something Satan. But they are saying they do not believe in Satan. That Satan is not real. So what are you worshiping? It's like me worshiping Jesus Christ. And I'm saying I do not believe in Jesus Christ. That for me, Jesus Christ does not exist. So what am I praying to? What, are, what is it that I'm doing? Sounds so retarded. They uh, don't believe in a literal Satan. Satan is a literary metaphor. It is so retarded. I cannot, I can, I can never understand it. It's hard to comprehend. Themselves, the, the Satanist people that worship Satan and saying he, they do not believe in Satan, they cannot explain, okay? What type of metaphor is that? They say, oh, yeah, it's just a metaphor. Okay, so what is it that you are worshiping then? I don't know, man. Somebody explain this to me, man. I'll catch you guys next time. Make sure to put God first. Get the Bible. Read as much as you can, man. Do not stop reading. Read, you finish, you start it again. You start it again. You start it again. To the day you die. You get what I mean? God is everything, man. Jesus Christ is Lord. Confess, accept, I'm out. Yes, sir. Click the link at the top of the comments. You can go check out my new song, Mark 836. Yes, sir. Homosexuality absolutely will send you to hell. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9, 10, and 11. It absolutely will send you to hell. It's not the only thing that will send you to hell, but it will send you to hell. But you know what? There's also forgiveness. Paul says, do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. You were those things. But you're not now. You are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified. There is forgiveness, but it will send you to hell. The devil's a god of this world. The devil's a god of this world. But what does it forbid a man to get the whole world and lose his soul? We can have the money, cars, and girls, and that will keep my soul. If you want everything, this life you have to save your soul. You wanted them so bad, devil went and sold your soul.